All right, uh, we're up here now today trying to uh, understand the korbanot. Um, korbanot, what people translate as sacrifices, I get a glimpse of it. Um, and it has to do a lot with eating, obviously. The word korban comes from karov, to come close. The whole goal of the korbanot is to come close to Hashem. Um, but it's a very strange thing because basically uh, it, it, is, it is one of the central focus of, at least when the temple was there, was the central focus of Jewish life is, is, was the korbanos and our table should look like a misbeach to remember, like an altar uh, that we brought korbanot and, um, and eating is the same thing. Eating is what, what we do all the time. We almost basically work to eat. That's the main activity. One of people eat because eating is a connector. It brings us closer also. So why, why is this eating and those korbanos thing the, so important? Um, there's a few places that it speaks about Gan Eden. And in Gan Eden also there's such a thing as korbanot um, in paradise. But uh, there it says that the in the, in the Gemara, in the Midrash, that the Malach Michael, Angel Michael, brings Korbanot to Hashem on the heavenly altar, corresponding to the uh, physical one, the Beta, so this is the Besamikdash here and the Besamikdash in heaven, and they all parallel each other. Here is all a reenactment or a parallel of what's above. And what does the Malach do? He puts the souls of the Tzadikim on the Mizbeach and uh, they, they elevated towards Hashem. So it's a very strange thing, but let's try to understand what that means. So, why, why are we here? Why are we here in the first place? We're here to the main understanding, at least from my limited understanding, because I don't understand much of, of, of the world, of the Torah, or even Kabbalah. Uh, I barely understand, but from my limited understanding, this is the perception I have for now, my understanding, is that we are here to transform ourselves, to elevate ourselves, and part of doing that means to take the world with us, because we're directly connected to the entire world, and by doing this, we are able to, so to speak, um, be one with the world and taking everything with us and elevate it towards Hashem by doing acts of elevation. Now one of the main acts of elevation is eating, which is something that people don't understand. When you eat, you're doing something incredible. The problem is that since you started, since you're one minute old, because you come out of the womb, right away you start uh, nursing. So. Uh, you you did that since you're a baby is like the most animalistic thing in the world, but if you think about it, if Hashem from birth tells you exactly why you're here, you're here to eat, and actually that eating connects you straight to the mother. It's it's almost an intimate part of the mother. It connects you to the mother. So the the the, the part where Hashem also it's like when you go to uh, the Besamikdash, you're connecting to the mother Hashem. Um, so, so I, we, Hashem is considered the mother in many places. In Tanakh, he mentioned Hashem as our mother, and how Hashem is actually breastfeeding us in the desert with the man, which was white, like the milk. Um, and therefore, there's a whole aspect of Hashem nursing us too. So the idea is food help us connect intimately to the source, uh, to the source of love, to the source of life. And we know food gives us life. We can't survive without life. So that's why when we eat, it's so important. It's if not one of the most important. After learning Torah and prayer, food is number three. Learning Torah, prayer, eating. All those three, actually, praying is almost like um, they're all interconnected. The whole, we learn how to learn from the way we eat. We learn how to eat from the way we learn. We learn how to pray from the way we learn, and we learn to pray from the way we eat also. And are they all three connected? Um, we re the, how do I know that? Because the prayers that we do replace the eating of the korbanos in the Besamikdash. They replace the korbanos themselves. 
and um, oh, learning is a whole preparation to elevate the world, to pray and to, uh, so you're supposed to learn before you pray, that's why we say Shema before you pray, uh, and you have praises before we pray. Um, I mean, we learn certain things before we, we, we pray, says the Gemara Brachos, and therefore um, uh, we have a whole um, uh, our whole life is really about that eating that we do almost every day. I mean, that, not almost, that we do every day, hopefully. Um, and so what's happening when we eat? So I'm going to go a little bit deep into the, the, the words of the Arizal, um, but it, what I'm explaining is on the most simple, cabalistic level possible that you can understand, because I don't understand beyond that. The idea is that there are different levels of elevation. Each time you elevate, elevate something, there's a tremendous pleasure in it. Um, but uh, there are different levels, and here we cannot feel experience so, m so much of those levels. But let's understand, God created the world in, on five levels. We here mostly experience four levels, which correspond to the four levels of, five levels of creation, the five levels of the soul, the five uh, levels of pleasure, and many other fives that we're not going to speak about now. So, the, the world, um, just for the people who know a little bit of Kabbalah, is Asiya, Yetzirah, Briya, Atsilus, and Adam Kadmon. Um, so, which basically would translate as the world of uh, action, physical world, the world of formation, which is already spiritual, the world of Briya, which is um, the world of creation, um, where God's the level of creation that God, God has made, um, then the level of Atzilut, which is the level of emanation, uh, completely spiritual, uh, this one must just Hashem, there's, there's no more angels, it's all Hashem. And the world of um, Adam Kadmon will be the world where we are completely one with Hashem. Uh, something like that. If you want to look deep, deeper into it, the, speak to a real Kabbalist. So those are the, fast, the five, five dimensions. Um, and there are five levels of consciousness, and the idea is to go from one to the other. Now, in this world, we can um, there is a parallel to all those five worlds, and it translates like that: there is the mineral, there is the vegetal uh, plants, there is the animal, then there is the human being, and then there is the superhuman being, so to speak, the level of uh, on level Ganeden or Olamaba. So, how do we do when we eat? Actually, we elevate all those levels. Um, minerals are elevated by, by the plants. The plants take the minerals and are able to, to grow. Then the, mineral, the plants are elevated by the animals because they eat it and it becomes part of them. Then the animals are elevated by the human being. But remembering that whatever level you have, whatever is above takes all three. Because in the animal you have the vegetal and the mineral. So when the human being eats a piece of meat, he's elevating all levels. Um, that's why actually according to Torah, according to the Torah, the, the ideal way to eat meat is in the way of very extreme awareness and level. That's why it says in the Gemara that a poor person, no, 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 sorry, not a poor person, um, a person who is ignorant, who is not a wise a sage, should not... Uh, who is not holy should not um, eat meat. Why? Because he has no concept of elevating. He doesn't know really what's what's going on and what, and, and he's wasting the animal, so to speak. So we should only eat meat, um, according to the rabbis, anyway. In times, uh, holy rabbis are, are in times of uh, of extreme awareness, like Shabbat, holy days. Um, Kabbalists eat only uh, usually on Shabbat, holy days, or um, Mitzvot, uh, Simchot, moment of tremendous joy for Mitzvah, Misudat Mitzvah. So, what do we do? We are there on the level of man and we elevate all that. And then the question is okay, how do you go from man to Superman, so to speak? From man to elevating yourself. And that's where come the Korbanot in Gan Eden. The Korbanot in Gan Eden is when man himself puts himself on the Mizbeach and is elevated. One hint of that was in last week's Parsha, in Parsha Shemini, where we see that uh, Nadav and Avihu came in front of Hashem with incense, and they wanted to elevate themselves. They thought they were already on the level of Gan Eden. And what does it say? 
And it was a mistake, obviously. It was just the beginning of the understanding of Besamikdash, but they thought the Besamikdash was like Gan Eden, which it kind of was a micro Gan Eden, but they went too fast. It was, the world was not ready for that. The, the, the Avodah of Gan Eden was not there yet. And what happened is that, by the way, this I learned from Rav Dinovich. I just wanted to, that part especially, uh, mention it. And what's happening is that it goes, um, the Gemara says, the Malach Michael take those souls and put on Mizbeach. And really what happened, it's very similar. Hashem comes with Nadav and Aviyu and sends a fire. And what does the Torah say? Uh, a fire that ate them. Meaning that Hashem is eating you, right? We, Hashem is being uh, elevating you. You are eating all those levels, and Hashem is eating you. You're giving yourself as food to Hashem. So it, it, it's it's a, a we don't understand what that means. Obviously, it's as it's it's a spiritual concept, and we don't really understand. Um, but how is going to be look? How does I was trying to understand? How does that look like when you are in Gan Eden? When you're in Gan Eden and you try to, uh, we're going to be there, and you go on the altar to sacrifice yourself, right? Which really we experience on some level in on Earth in the Besamikdash, where when you put the animal, the animal represents you. You're supposed to feel that you are in place of the animal, and the animal is going to be elevated, that's really your soul getting elevated, and that's how you get purified and forgiven, um, or, or, or elevated towards Hashem by, by celebrating something, sharing with Him something. So the idea is that um, I think, we know that prayer replaces the korbanot. I think really what it means is that uh, it's the power, it has to do with the power of speech. Our power of speech is the place where we eat, is the same place where we speak and pray. This is the place that's going to be used for complete elevation. Um, uh, and and, and, and it's, there's no coincidence that it's the same place. The place where we eat is the place where we sing. So on the, on the physical level, in the physical world, we eat and things go down. When we actually speak and say the words, so to speak, go up in heaven. It's like that mouth connects both worlds. Um, and indeed, that's why we actually have to pray uh, out loud and sing out loud um, most of the time. Uh, because the, 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 we need to connect to the physical and the spiritual. The thought, and my, my, my speech is a combination of thought and vibration from my throat and whatever is in my mouth, and that's physical and spiritual. So when I basically uh, go on the Mizbeach in Gan Eden, it means that I am giving of myself, sacrificing myself through my words, the, lear the learning of Torah, and, but more than that, as far as I understand, is when we are going to sing to Hashem, uh, what do we angels do all day long in Gan Eden? They're singing. What is there to do in Gan Eden if you're already elevated? Again, uh, Olam Abba, I, mean, I should say Olam Abba, Gan Eden, it's not exactly the same thing. Olam Abba is the reward time. Gan Eden is a time where everything is already perfect. Uh, it's before Olam Abba. So, so then the, the service of the high, highest level is when you're praising to Hashem and your words, right? The same way Hashem blew into you some neshama, He blew a neshama in you and into, you, into your nostrils in order to become alive. So do you blow into his nostrils. Actually, it's interesting that we say Nereach Nichoach Lashem, that it's an incense for Hashem. Hashem smells the korbanot. He smells he, he, the, the, the thing. And that's what we're doing. We are we're calling to Hashem through our words and we're blowing into his nostrils, so to speak, our neshama by singing and saying words of Torah, which are supposed to seduce him to come close to him so that he can eat us, so to speak, because eating is the concept of love. Uh, we always, uh, even in the physical world, they associate food, consuming, with consuming your marriage. Food and love are one the same thing, is to come closer, to be one, 
to be one with the thing. You eat something, it becomes part of you, you become one with it. So the whole idea is like you're elevating yourself and then you be, Hashem by eating you, so to speak, transforms you into a higher level. You become close, part of Hashem. Because when you eat, it becomes part of you. When you Hashem eats you, you become part of Hashem, so to speak, and it brings you to a high level. After that, I don't know what happens. I guess uh, it's uh, you, you. Maybe you're re, you rebrought in this world with in the spiritual world with. Um, we're speaking on the level of Gan Eden, obviously, um, with with more elevation, and then you try to reach the next level where Hashem is again, again, uh, going to eat you on a high level. So. Um, I hope that gave you a lot of food for thoughts and help you understand that eating is not that simple and it's actually very holy. Interestingly, one of the only bracha that, the only bracha, the oraita from the Torah that, um, or we say the only prayer that was given is the Birket Amazon. It's the only bracha that uh, that's given by the Torah. This is our life. You eat, you be satiated, and you celebrate Hashem. The whole eating experience is saying, take from this world, experience this world, feel it, be satiated, and celebrate it. Make a bracha to Hashem, make Hashem greater from that experience. Make yourself greater from that experience. You come closer to Hashem, elevate the world through that experience. Our whole life is about that. And there's nothing more exciting there's more i mean we love eating we go everywhere to eat and people love eating we spend our time like trying different stuff you could go every day of your life in a different restaurant so there's so much uh into the world of eating it, it uh, we have to be careful when we eat you have to eat with understanding that it's not just an animal thing and there's a reason why it's all, it looks like an animal thing. I mean, it, it, every animal does it. Because the animal also needs to elevate the world, so to speak. So you can elevate the animal. It's, it, the, 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 pl the plant, and for the people who are vegetarian, which, or vegan or whatever, they don't eat meat. There's one thing about not eating meat, because yes, we shouldn't eat meat just like that. Um, uh, it, it can destroy the elevation. If you eat meat and you... you mistreat animals and plants and all that, it's, that's not good. You should only do it in certain times. Um, but there, there is this concept of elevating and f really I don't think we'll have as many vegetarian and vegan if we will treat animals the right way and if we will eat only at certain times and for the right reason. We will not look at an animal as a, just a piece of meat and, and, uh, or a meat that we, or an animal that we kill and then it's, it's terrible we kill animals. We look at it as an elevation of creation. Um, but because we don't even respect animals and how we're going to respect ourselves uh, to elevate something like that. Uh, we, we have to learn to respect nature and see there's a whole chain but this is a chain of food and it's a chain also of spirituality and uh, as we discussed the five levels uh, where we try to elevate creation so I hope it will give you food for thoughts and that you'll be able to eat in a way that is um, more spiritual transforming your table into a misbeach um, um, my rabbi many times told me that technically you know if you're a holy person you don't eat snack a snack uh, why you eat snack just to get some tasty thing in your mouth, um, you eat when you're really hungry uh, because when, when you're hungry it means it's your neshama calling saying I, want, I need to elevate something. Why? Well, by the way, when you eat you're not feeding just your body, that's a mistake. You're feeding your body and your soul. Uh, you're, 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 you're elevating your, yourself. That's why everything that comes in this world um, is Shakol Nyebidvao, everything was made by his word. So the, the spiritual energy in the food that feeds your soul and your body in the same time. Uh, that's also a different all, all concept, to be aware that you're not just feeding your body, you're actually feeding your soul is, is a big thing. Uh, and you, that's why you feel energized. And that's why it's so important to keep kosher, because when you eat kosher, you, it's not just feeding your body. If you're just feeding your body, then who cares? A good, nice piece of pork, delicious, good, nice. It's not that. You have a soul also. Otherwise, why be on this world and worry about the good and the bad? Just be an animal. No, we're here to, for a mission to elevate the world, to get closer to God. 
and there's an elevation system and therefore since if you believe you have something spiritual you can watch what you eat spiritual uh, eating culture means there are certain animals that are not completely um, their, their soul are, are too heavy um, so to speak and to elevate our soul it's, a, it's like you eat some fatty cake it's gonna make you fat if you eat fatty spiritual animals so to speak then it's gonna make your soul fat and heavy so uh, the more you're careful with your food the more you can become spiritual and elevated um, even if you're a non-Jew uh, on a certain level the more careful you are uh, because we don't have the same mission, so it's, it's a little bit different. Um, but but it, there are many rabbis who hold that even the non jew should eat uh, kosher because it will help them if they want to meditate and be spiritual and, and closer to God, that will definitely help them. Um, so with all that, I think I gave you enough food for thoughts. And may you um, uh, eat in the proper way so that Hashem rejoices at the smell of each one of your eating and davening and learning.